Is Xenia familiar with gods of the Eastern cult such as Shiva, Parvati, Vishnu, Durga, Krishna and Brahma? If so, how does this pantheon, in her opinion, relate to the pantheon of the Norse gods? And what does she think about Bhakti Yoga as a method of restoring one's relationship with the gods? In various cultures, one can find gods who share similar qualities, Zeus and Indra, for example. What is Xenia's opinion on that? Are those just different names of one and the same god, or are these different gods all by linked together in some way? Different. Linked together. For all gods are linked to one another, since all of us are working on this earth, on this Gaia. These are different minds. They derive from different sources, and each of them here is taking care of their own business. Any pantheon, any family system of gods stands upon a certain mathematical model. The system of pagan gods stands upon the triple frequency model, the model of the three magical circles that we work with. The system of Scandinavian gods is powered by the Yggdrasil tree, which is currently in front of you. Today's system of current interconnection of various deities is built upon the Sephiroth tree. Here it is in front of us. But the Eastern tradition is running on its own operating system that is not represented here. Because that particular mathematical model is working out its own set of laws and they have nothing to do with the Western tradition. This is why the East and the West are two different things and they shall never meet. It is truly so. I look favorably upon Hinduism and the ancient traditions of the Hindu gods. That said, keep in mind that this system is created for the purpose of working out its own algorithms and achieving victory via their own algorithms. People who were brought up within this system possess a slightly different energo informational consciousness structure. I won't dive deep into that at this moment, but it is different from the European energo informational consciousness structure. Our is founded upon the four elements and the sevenfold structure of the human body. Our consciousness is designed this way. Theirs is slightly different. They have a more elements and their subtle bodies have a slightly different structure and order. For example, the etheric and the astral body are powered in a different way from ours. Which is why, as soon as someone of the Western European blood descent starts practicing Buddhism, Hinduism, or anything related to Eastern religions, his or her consciousness and body begin to mutate to fit that system. And you should just be prepared for this. You won't stay the same. Your body and mind will undergo corresponding mutations that will subsequently follow you in this life as well as in the next происходить соответствующие мутации, которые естественно воспоследуют, как в этой жизни. As by possessing this sort of consciousness structure, if this mutation will go on for quite a while, you won't be able to reincarnate anywhere except on the territory under the aegis of the Hindu or Buddhist gods or any other Eastern systems that are powered by the appropriate model. И всех восточных систем, которые на этом деле работают. Will this lead to falling out of the old bloodline? Naturally, of course, because it would be impossible to incarnate in the old bloodline. Again, this only holds if this mutation should go on long enough, because there is such a thing as a fad. A fad comes and goes, and in this case the mutation doesn't reach the deep-seated mental levels. So yes, everything could normalize, but quite painfully. This is how people who have even once visited Mount Kailash will never be the same. Indeed, their whole system experiences a collapse and they have to restore their entire superstructure. You should be careful. Understand that this world is not made for humans. The human is a tool here. It is made for gods. And essentially, these sorts of things are not important to gods, but they are important to humans. And one should truly think before diving into any tradition. At the very least, carefully inspect everything theoretically and understanding the meaning, why this tradition is this way and that tradition is that way, and what is the difference between them. And what is the distinction between someone from the East versus someone from the West. One should inspect this matter thoroughly and understand what you can expect if you cross into another tradition. 
Regarding the last part of your question related to the practice of yoga in order to establish a connection with your gods, yes, that would be correct if the gods are part of the Hindu pantheon. The practice that you brought up as an example, would hardly work to establish a connection with Christ, for example, because it simply will not work. And if it happens to work, it would do so in such a peculiar way that you won't like it even one bit. There is a reason why every tradition has specific rituals of establishing contact with their God. They all possess a specific orientation because they tune one's consciousness to the necessary frequency, the frequency that matches the mind vibrations of a certain God. If they would have vibrated at the same frequency, then it would have been the same deity. So, if they have different vibrations, it means that they are distinctly different gods, and you wouldn't be able to establish contact with a god using a ritual meant for another pantheon, another god.